Hi everybody. So we're here to simplify some radicals today. I wanted to practice simplifying radicals with just a plain number first, such as, say for example, the square root of 80. And when I say simplifying, I mean um, that I'm looking for squares that are inside of 80. And a lot of kids can't really factor 80 in their head. So I'm going to mention right now that instead of using a traditional factor tree, I like to use what I call the single branching factor tree. 80 is divisible by 2. And I like 2 because it's the smallest prime number that I'm interested in. So I always check to see, is a number divisible by 2? If it is, I divide it. If it is, I divide it again. If it still is, I keep dividing it. In fact, I'll keep dividing it until it isn't anymore. And the last number that remains is still a prime. Those are the leaves of my factor tree. Only my factor tree is nice and organized. It's organized in such a way that I can say that this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and that all of those numbers live underneath that radical symbol, which we also know as the square root symbol. So a lot of kids think my game is silly, but I call it the marrying game. So there's a saying out there, you may have heard of it, when two people get married under the eyes of God, they become one. And so the square root of 4 should be just 1, 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. But when we just have that cute little story that people are getting married, then we say these twos are getting married, those twos are getting married, and they leave the radical house because then they got to go find their own place to live now. There is a square root of 5 left over, nobody to get married to. All of these things are being multiplied together. So in order to make it most simple, I do want to take 2 times 2 and get a 4. That is the simplified version of the square root of 80. Now, it would be nice if I could show you, say, for example, another exam another number. Right? Let's just try one more. And I'll say, how about the square root of 90? Well, if you factor it, I say 90 is divisible by 2. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll get 45, which is not divisible by 2. So the next prime number I would look at would be, say, 3. Is 45 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. What do you get? 15. Is that divisible by 3? Yes. What do, we, what do you get? 5. Oh, there's my last prime, and I'm bringing it over. So 90 is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. And when I look at it, those 3s are getting married and leaving the radical house. So I say I have 3 times the square root of 10 as a final answer. So that's how you do it with just plain numbers, but you do need to be able to do it with variables as well. So let's take an example such as, um, how about the square root of 40, m to the fifth, and y squared. So I still play the game, even though I have letters in here. There's not as much to factor. It's not as hard to factor. I'll say that I do want to factor 40, and that is divisible by 2. That's still divisible by 2. Still divisible by 2. There's my last prime number. I'm going to say that I now have... 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times a bunch of M's, okay? It can be a little bit tedious to write down a bunch of M's, but as a teaching example, I think it's okay. Y and a Y. What do we notice? The 2's are getting married. The M's are getting married. The M's are getting married. And a last set of things are getting married. Those are the Y's. What is left inside is still very important and sometimes kind of hard to see. So make sure that you find everything that still lives in the radical house, which is a 2 and a 5 and an M. All of these things are being multiplied together. So I will say my final answer is 2 M squared Y times the square root of 10 M. Ooh, that's pretty ugly looking. I thought you said you were simplifying, Ms. Shatra. I agree. I know. It doesn't look that much simpler, but we're just doing pure math here, and sometimes we just practice it to practice it and see how it goes. So if you would like to practice a problem, I would say, how about we try this one? And you should try it and pause. Okay, pause the video and then come back. 
Hopefully you've given this a shot. You notice that as soon as you tried to factor 27, that that wasn't divisible by two. I was giving you too many examples that were, so I decided to try one that wasn't. So what is 27 divisible by? It is divisible by three. 27 divided by three is nine, which is still divisible by three, which is still divisible by three. Three cubed is 27. So if I'm playing the little mar getting married game, I have a three and a three and a three, and an X and an X and an X, and a Z and a Z and a Z and a Z. That's a lot of Zs. I get it. It's a lot. So I would say the threes are getting married, a couple of Xs are getting married, and all of the Zs are getting married. There are no Zs left inside of that house. All of this is being mar uh, multiplied together. And so I'm going to put together a final answer right now. 3xz squared times the square root of 3x. So if I'm going too fast, you can stop, you can pause, you can rewind. I want to go over a little bit about these variables because you're thinking, I don't want to write down so many m's anymore. Well, you know, there were four m's in here with one left over. Think about that. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 1 is left over. How about uh, the y's? Well, 2 divided by 2 is a hidden invisible 1. And over here, I would say that x has, there's 3 of them, and 3 divided by 2 it doesn't work quite easily, so it's, it's odd. So we say we have 2 divided by 2, which is 1, with 1 left over. But here, 4 is definitely divisible by 2, and I should get 2, and there's no z's left over. So this should lead us into some kind of intuition about if we have an even number of exponents, then we can just divide it by 2 and everybody leaves the radical house. If we have an odd number of exponents, then that means that one is going to be left inside and that even number that we can divide by two that's closest, we would say, is going to get married and leave the radical house. So if you wanted to try a couple of examples, you'd say, hey, what is the square root of x to the eighth? Well, it would be x to the fourth because eight divided by two is four. What about x to the ninth? Well, x to the ninth, it's, you know, odd. So I would think about it more like this. I would say this was x to the eighth times x. And the x to the eighth, well, that's eight divided by two is four. And the square root of x is still left over. See? Just thought you'd like that.